Whoa, what is up my people? I'm Joey from Universal CPA Review, the only CPA review course that is truly designed for visual learners. Let's be honest, there's nothing about a block of text or looking at this old man's face that's gonna help you understand the intuition behind this material. You need a systematic approach. I'm talking a step one through step four for every single topic. What you need is a mental map, and that's exactly what we're going to give you. But before we dive into this video, I need you to do three very simple things for me. But please like this video, and if you have any thoughts, leave us a comment. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our team works tirelessly to bring you valuable CPA insight, and without your support, we are nothing. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this question. First and foremost, we need to identify that the question is asking for something that is happening in the investing section of the statement of cash flows. So the first thing that should come to your mind when you think about the investing section is that this is going to represent the acquisition and the sale of non-current assets. Okay, so the acquisition price of this forklift is going to cost $30,000. Okay, however, when you think about the statement of cash flows, the question you need to ask yourself is how much cash is going out the door today? Okay, so while $30,000 is the eventual amount that is going to get paid, $3,000 is the amount that is going out the door today. Okay, so $3,000 is getting paid today, and the remaining $27,000 of the $30,000 is getting deferred as a future payment. Right? Because if we read this question carefully, we see that they're going to pay $1,000 per month over the next 27 months, and that will represent that remaining $27,000. Okay, so that remaining $27,000 is going to be the remaining payment of the principal. Okay, so we're going to classify that as debt financing. So that would be classified on the financing section. Okay, so when you see this $1,000 per month over the course of 27 months, those payments would be out of the financing section, not the investing section. The $3,000 down payment is the cash going out the door today for this investment. That is going to be presented in the investing section. So therefore, the correct answer choice is going to be $3,000. Okay, so we're talking about the statement of cash flows. Specifically, we're talking about the operating section while using the direct method. Okay, so we're focused on how inventory purchases impacts cash outflow. And the reason we're focused on cash outflow is because they're asking for the amount that is reported as cash paid. Okay, so we're going to be using the information provided. And what we're going to focus on is cost of goods sold, right? We're focused on how much cash is paid for inventory purchased. When you're purchasing your inventory, this is cost of goods sold. So if before making these adjustments, our cost of goods sold amount was $1.2 million, how much would the cost of goods sold amount be after making these adjustments? So we see that inventory went down in the current year, right? We had a beginning balance of $200,000 and an ending inventory balance of $150,000. So how does a decrease in inventory impact cost of goods sold? Maybe less inventory was purchased from our suppliers. Okay, so if less inventory was purchased, that would be a decrease in cash outflow or cash paid to the suppliers. So we would decrease this cost of goods sold amount by $50,000. And if we have a decrease in account payable, that would mean that we paid back debt that was previously owed. That means maybe we're purchasing our inventory on credit that we subsequently went back and paid. This is cash outflow, cash going out the door that is being paid to our suppliers. That would be an increase in cash outflow meaning we would have an increase to cost of goods sold of $100,000. So the total cash paid to suppliers would be $1.25 million. Hold that thought. I just want to give a quick shout out to Danielle for passing all four sections of the CPA exam after switching to Universal CPA Review. When I found Universal CPA, I was on my third retake of FAR. I was just close to giving up as I had been through Becker several times and it just wasn't getting any easier for me. I had failed by four points. Um, once I found Universal, the concepts just started to click, uh, made sense to me. I went on to pass FAR, pass REG. I barely failed um, BEC, then went on to pass BEC and pass audit with only 10 days of studying um, because the concepts really stuck with me once I learned them and I was able to carry them on to the next section um, and help me pass there. Thanks, Universal CPA. You go, Danielle. All right, let's get back to it. So let's start with the big picture here. What type of item are we going to address here? We're going to talk about the cash flow statement. And if we specifically read the last sentence, it says, what is Mabel's net adjustment to net income to determine net cash from operating activities. 
So we know we're talking about the operating section of the cash flow statement. And as we recall, there's really two methods for preparing the cash flow statement. There's either the direct or the indirect. Now, since the question is asking about the net adjustment to net income, then we should know we're talking about the indirect method. So our starting point is net income, but we know that net income doesn't necessarily reflect actual cash flow in the business, right? Because there's non-cash items, there's changes in working capital, as well as other items. So the visual lists out all the different things we should think about. So let's go through and see which ones are applicable. So I see prepaid expenses and accounts payable. Well, that's going to be part of changes to operating assets and changes to operating liabilities. So put a check mark there. Land, land typically is not part of operating assets, right? An operating section, right? It's a long-term or non-current asset. Now, if we purchase or sell land, that's going to be in the investing section. However, if there is a, a loss or a gain, that also needs to be reversed out of the operating section. And if we read that last sentence, it does say that land was sold for a loss of $40,000. So let's go ahead and put a check mark next to that as we will need to address that item. So I don't really see any other items here that need to be you know, accounted for in this net adjustment to net income for the operating section. So let's start with the sale of land, right? There was a $40,000 loss. Now, how would that loss be calculated? Well, we would have the purchase price, which is what the buyer would pay Mabel, and then we would just subtract the carrying value of the land. And that gives us our loss, or it could be a gain, right? But in this case, it's a loss of $40,000. Now, the only cash flow impact here would be the actual purchase price, which is the cash that Mabel actually receives. However, that goes down in the investing section. So basically, all we need to do here is reverse that loss so that there's no impact to the operating section. Because unless Mabel actively engages in the sale of land, right? Well, then it's not really part of the recurring activities for them. So it wouldn't necessarily be an operating activity. So we'll go ahead and put plus $40,000 in our net adjustment because we need to reverse that loss. Now let's pop back up to prepaid expenses, right? We know that's an operating asset. Now if prepaid expenses decreased from $20,000 in the previous year to $10,000 in the current year, well, that's less money that we're laying out for future benefit, right? That's what a prepaid expense is. So if that's decreased, well, that results in a cash inflow. That means the company has more cash on their balance sheet. So in our net adjustment, that's gonna be a plus $10,000. Now the same mindset needs to be applied to accounts payable. Now in this case, because it increased from $30,000 to $50,000 in the current year, well that means we're holding off on paying our vendors. So it means more cash is on the balance sheet. So that means it's a cash inflow. And since the difference there is $20,000, we'll put plus $20,000 in our table. So now that we factor in everything that needs to be included in our net adjustment, to net income for the operating section, we just need to add it up, right? So we have the reversal or the add back from that loss from sale of land of $40,000. We have the cash inflow from the decrease in prepaids of 10,000. And then we also have the cash inflow from the increase in accounts payable of 20,000. And that means our net adjustment to net income is gonna be $70,000 positive. So that's the correct answer. So we've got Brown Bros, they're preparing their cash flow statement for the current year. Now it's specifically focused on the investing section. So let's bring up the investing section and what typically gets included in that section. Now the question is asking which of the following would be most likely included in the investing section. So don't skip through and just pick one that looks like it's investing. Go through all four and let's classify them and then figure out, okay, for sure we're positive that this is the only one that's going to investing. And then that's going to be the correct answer, right? So on the first one, the company has issued bonds in the amount of $8,000. So when the company issues bonds, that is a form of debt financing. And what they're doing there is they're issuing debt to get cash now to finance part of their business, right? So obviously that's going to be a financing section. And that's going to be number one under debt financing in our financing visual, right? So that's how you're sure about it. How about the company has made a loan of $10,000 to an outside company? So the key word there is loan and really, right, we always think loan financing, but that's not the case here. Because we're making a loan to an unaffiliated outside company, that's going to be an investing activity. And that is number two in the investing visual. Now, why would we do that? Well, we don't know for sure, but presumably the company would get something in return for making that loan. 
probably interest income, but it could be other things. But either way, that's going in the investing section. So let's check on the last two before we declare that the correct answer. So on the next one, the company has issued $5,000 in stock to common shareholders. So when we issue common stock, which is number one under equity financing in our financing section visual, well, we would do that because those shareholders are going to give us cash and we're going to use that cash to enhance the business, right? Well, that's a form of financing and not investing. So that is going to be incorrect. And on the last one, the company has repaid principal on an outstanding loan in the amount of $50,000. So when we make payments on debt, there's typically an interest component and then a principal component. Now, payment of principal, which is number three under debt financing in our financing section visual, that's going in the financing section. Now, if we're talking about interest, that goes in the operating section, but either way, it's not going in the investing section. So that's going to be incorrect. So the only item here that's going in the investing section, and it's going to be our correct answer, is the company has made a loan of $10,000 to an outside company. All right, we've got the cash flow statement here. And before we jump into, you know, the specific dynamics here, let's remember the cash flow statement has three sections. And guess what? Helpful tip. Oops, I forget, right? That's the helpful little tip. It means oops equals operating section, I equals investing section, and then forget, well, that's the financing section, right? So there's the three sections. Probably everybody already knows those by now, but just in case, just remember that helpful tip. Oops, I forget. Now, just because we can do it, we're going to bring up the three visuals for each section of the cash flow statement that help us remember what exactly is included in each of those sections. Now, for the operating section, since this question is focused only on the cash outflows, I'm only going to bring up the outflow impact for the operating section. But for the investing section and the financing section, there's less items, right? So we only have one visual and you can see them all neatly summarized on the screen now. So ultimately, if we read the last sentence here, right, it says what amount is classified as cash outflow for financing activities in the company's statement of cash flows? Now, there's three options here. We'll run through each one. We'll categorize it and see which items impact the financing section. And if it matters, right, there could be a cash inflow from financing. So we need to remember that we're only focused on cash outflows. So that could be a key fact in a question on the exam that if you didn't pick that up and you just said, well, these two items are financing activities, let's add them together. But in fact, it's only asking about the cash outflows. Well, then you get it wrong, right? So it's very important to read the full question. So starting with principal payments on notes payable. Now, why would a company have a note payable? Well, when they would initially issue that note payable as a financing activity, right? And that's a cash inflow. They issue the note, and the lender gives them money, right? So that's the cash inflow. Now, it's maybe a five-year note. They have to pay back part of the principal each year. And those principal payments, well, those are going to be financing activities. Now, if you're wondering where that's listed on our financing section visual, well, it's under debt financing. And specifically, it's under payment of principal on debt. And again, a note payable is just a form of debt. So we'll go ahead and mark that $48,000 as part of the financing section. So moving on to the interest payments on notes payable for $8,000. Now we already said notes payable, right? That is part of financing section. But how about the interest payment on that note? Well, this is where some people do get tricked up. They immediately think, well, that's part of financing because it relates to debt, but that's not the case, right? Any interest payments made by a company on debt, that is going to be part of the operating section right? That's number four in our cash outflow items related to the operating section. And since we're talking about the financing section here, this is going to be excluded, right? So this is one you just absolutely need to remember that any interest payments that the company makes, those are part of the operating section. And then the last item here, right, is a cash payment to purchase 100 shares of another company's common stock, right? So that is going to be an equity investment. When we purchase shares of another company, that's an equity investment. Now, the question is, is it probably operating? Is it investing? Well, it kind of depends, but ultimately, because it's going to probably be a short-term investment, they're just purchasing a small amount, that's going to be classified as trading, and that's going to be an outflow to the operating section. But either way, it's not part of financing, so that $25,000 
is not part of financing. So ultimately, the only item here that can be considered a cash outflow for the financing section of the company's cash flow statement is going to be that principal payments on notes payable. So $48,000 is the correct answer.